Yeah, so I remember leaving the MTC, you fly to the mission home, which for the Nairobi mission is in Kenya, it's in the uh, Nairobi city. And so we went to the mission home, which is in Upper Hill, um, and uh, met with the mission president. He has an interview with you, kind of gets you accustomed to the mission home and office there. And uh, then uh, the next, or then he assigns you or tells you where you're going to be serving and your first companion or your trainer and such. Um, I was assigned for my first area to go to Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. And so that meant, I guess I arrived there, slept over at the assistance apartment, and then met with the mission president the next day. Um, but uh, I jumped right back on a plane and flew down to Dar es Salaam. And so that was my first area, was in an area called the Bungo. Um, and I served with my trainer, Elder Nsile. And uh, we just, I mean, it was a pretty typical, I guess, like, first experience. You're still trying to get down like the lessons very well and other things. Um, but the major thing is, is that what I notice is that, especially in, well, in both countries, I guess, that people aren't super familiar with the gospel. They are pretty good scriptorians because they're very religious people. Um, but they also have a great respect for uh, missionaries or people, men of God, as they call you. Um, and so you don't really experience a lot of like people spitting on you or anything like that because they have a general respect um, for anyone that's like trying to do missionary work. Um, but it was hard. Um, I guess the most difficult part about going straight to Tanzania is that they don't speak English um, and they only or exclusively speak uh, Swahili. And so I didn't ever learn that in the MTC. Um, they don't teach it in the MTC currently. And so, in addition to trying to teach the lessons or learn the lessons in English, I was now having to learn Swahili at the same time. So, that was a little bit difficult, but my companion was very helpful. I mean, he would teach me a little bit by day, or every day in the morning. But it's, we didn't take an hour for like language study just because we were busy, and so we just do it throughout the day. Um, which was, I thought was helpful because there's no better teacher than experience. And so I would just kind of go through the day with my broken Swahili and try. Um, when I was serving there, they didn't let us teach in Swahili. And so we'd contact and meet with people in Swahili. But then when it came to teaching, we would have to switch over to English because the church didn't have all the materials that they wanted or needed for the church to be able to rerun in Swahili, published yet or translated yet. Um, currently, or right now at least, they are allowing it to be taught in Swahili. So the missionaries now know Swahili a lot better than I do. Um, and so now they actually teach in Swahili. So mine was kind of a weird transition stage in where we could talk with people and meet with people in Swahili. But when it came to teaching, we had to do it all in English. So that was my experience. I served in uh, two, two different areas. Yeah, no, three different areas in uh, Dar es Salaam. I served in Abungo, like I mentioned, for a transfer and a half. There was um, some complications elsewhere in the mission, and then it caused me to get transferred in the middle of a transfer to be someone else's companion. Um, so I served then in Kinindoni and then in Kinindoni too. So those are just some different areas in Dar es Salaam. It's hot. I guess I, that's one impression that you get. Dar es Salaam is very hot and humid. I think it's probably the hottest and humid, most humid place on the mission. And I've been to every area, so I can stay, say that with full confidence. I believe it is the hottest and most humid part of the mission. Um, but I mean, just normal missionary attire. You don't ever wear suits. Um, some missionaries will wear them to zone conferences, and that was the typical thing. But um, during your proselyting or even to like, I don't know, church or anything, you just wear a white shirt and tie. Some missionaries chose to wear their suits on Sunday, but most didn't. So, First little while going to Kenya was pretty crazy. I went to the South Africa MTC, and so that was, you know, a little bit kind of getting there to being in Africa. Um, obviously, we were in the MTC the whole time, so it wasn't too crazy. We didn't see anything too intense, but as we, you know, got to Nairobi, that's when we definitely realized we were in a very different world than where we could just come from. Um, and my first area was in Kenya, 
it was in a place called Eldoret, and I lived in a, a little bit of a rougher area in Eldoret. Um, it was in the outskirts of town, and um, I just remember that first bus ride. So we got on a bus and we had a ride for eight hours uh, to my area, and I just remember looking out the window and just seeing, you know, the acacia tree, the flat tops trees, and and seeing zebras and seeing, you know, giraffe on the side of the road and all these, you know, cool stuff and just realizing, you know, I'm in Africa. This isn't, you know, it's I'm not planning my mission anymore. I'm here, and and it's time to begin. And you know, most people as they as they go um, on their mission in general, but especially especially to my mission. They always say, you know, that first couple of weeks is really hard and those first couple of days are really hard. And for me, I didn't feel that. Um, I really was so excited to be there and I loved it so much that it, it, I don't know, it just wasn't, it wasn't a hard adjustment for me. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed, you know, seeing a different world and seeing a different culture and a different people. And I loved them before I even met them. And so that mental preparation, I feel like helped me a lot for those first couple of days. Um, it was obviously different. My trainer was from Zimbabwe, um, and he, you know, was different than anyone I've ever lived with. And so that was a little bit of an adjustment just to living with someone from a different culture, but it wasn't that bad. Um, but, you know, going and, and seeing, you know, the streets are dirt streets. I mean, it's Africa. It's exactly what you look, you think of. That's what we lived in. And, um, and it was, it was fun. It was crazy. It was exciting. It was, you know, a little nervous at first just to get into the feel of teaching and, and bearing testimony and inviting and all those things was a little bit hard at first. And, you know, in Kenya, they speak English most of the time, but the kids don't speak English. They speak Swahili and some of them don't speak that good of English anyways. And so that, you know, language barrier and trying to pick up on the little things that are different about a new place was really, it was really quite fun. Um, to be able to learn about a new culture and about a new people. I really enjoyed those first couple of weeks. And, you know, it was only up from there. The rest of my mission was just grew upon those first couple of weeks.